what a good and amazing day and what an amazing god we serve that he gave his blood first of all i want you to understand without the shedding of the blood there is no forgiveness of sins so blood is the one that redeems blood is the one that really makes a covenant in the old testament um if two people want to make a covenant they cut their hand and there there will be a blood that is bleeding out of their hand and they unite the hand and that is the custom in according to the middle eastern country especially in israel that is uh, that is how god really initially um created the covenant between two people through the blood covenant it is mentioned in the bible in some instance uh but primarily god want to redeem you and me through his blood sinless blameless unblemished pure holy innocent blood that's why jesus died and uh this is really an eternal plan from god it's a redemption plan from god this is um even before the foundation of the world the lord really wanted jesus to die in our place so that is really uh an amazing yes yeah, so god is so good and uh, his grace is so amazing and his blessing is so powerful is going to do amazing things yes god's god's blood is so powerful so the blood of jesus poured into the mercy seat so as the blood of jesus is poured into the poured upon the mercy seat the two cherubims they watch the blood and uh, god's presence is in the mercy seat so god's presence so you are able to enter into the most holy place because of the blood of jesus uh priest the high priest they take the blood they enter into the most high high place or most holy place through the blood of the lamb but that is valid only for one year and next year they have to sacrifice an another lamb but bible says in the book of hebrews that jesus died once for all the lamb that was slain is jesus and his blood is sufficient for once for all and uh, throughout every year every day every day we can able to enter into the most holy place if enemy is really causing you to feel guilty and condemned that uh, oh i am not worthy yes you and i are not worthy but his blood made us worthy his blood made us to enter into the most holy place his blood made us to live in the presence of god dwell in the presence of god and that is the radical grace of god that brought us united with the father through the blood so the moment when you know the power of the blood the blood breaks every chains so i'm going to um continue with the meditation of god's blood and also what the blood has done in our life and uh, how you can apply the blood in every areas of your life in ministry and uh this is the foundational topic but uh, once you get this um you are going to be very strong in christ you are going to be very strong in the spirit your life is going to be empowered so yes bible says in the first john chapter 1 and verse 7 if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus his son cleanses us from all sin if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and there and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so this is what bible says in the book of first john so God's blood is working in us. God's blood is really cleansing us. The blood of Jesus is purifying us, sanctifying us. The blood of Jesus is really redeeming us and uh, we need to always uh, believe what the scripture says about the blood of Jesus. Um yes, and uh, there is a life in the blood. That's why God told um to not eat the blood. So that's the reason why the Israelites are forbidden to eat the blood. And um uh, under the law pretty much everything is purified by the blood so today you and i are also purified by the blood the new covenant we are also purified by the blood not just the objects but you and i become the objects of god's radical focus so god intentionally focused on us god was god wanted us to be redeemed god wanted us to have to be his compa- companion or to be his to be in his relationship to be a uh, united in his intimate relationship to walk with him so god seeing us as a bride especially jesus is our bridegroom and he redeemed us uh, or ransomed us or he yeah redeem redemption is the right word through his own blood enemy held us captive but the blood broke every chain 
and uh, bible says do not eat the flesh with its life and that is its blood god reserved us to eat the life of christ and god told do not eat any anything with the blood so if anything people eat raw um with the blood and that is really against god's word so genesis 9:4 because god told don't eat anything that is with the blood um because blood has the life and uh, that is very essential and uh, so it's very important and also we see that like if we yeah so as we read in the first john 17 we saw these things are just recapping uh some of the passages and then we are going to go so therefore he uh, jesus is the one who came by the water and blood jesus christ not by the water alone but by the blood also so this is first john 5 6 so jesus did not came just with water john the baptist came and he gave the water baptism but jesus came he gave a blood baptism in other words cleansing of you and me through the blood and that's what we see that as a um jesus came uh, by blood as well not just by water alone um so yeah so if you remember like last uh, week I, i mean like a week before last week i remember saying this um all the enemies of israel they all came through the northern gate so that's why jesus was uh, crucified outside the gate especially the northern side of israel where the enemies like um goliath came through the northern gate philistines and pretty much like lot of enemies major enemies of israel is from the northern gate so it's like a you know like israel is a symbolic uh, representation shadow or like a yeah so for knowledge of a precursor of what is to come so the new jerusalem so that's the uh, that's how god really chose israel and uh, started everything from israel but now god's word says that there is uh, no jew or no, no gentile because through the blood we all are become one in christ so that is a great thing so before only jewish people and only abraham um and his generation were blessed but through the blood of jesus we are united into the bloodline of abraham so we have a privilege now to call jewish people as our brothers through the blood of jesus so blood of jesus not only united us to heaven but the blood of jesus united us even in the horizontally um peter paul and uh, all the people they were all brothers now in christ jesus through the blood of jesus and that is really powerful um if you look at that uh, it is so powerful move of god that how he united the jewish people and gentiles together alike um through the blood blood done that work and uh, nothing else can able to do that work and paul realized that that's why he primarily ministered among gentiles he did not see the see the gentiles as um you know like uh, in the olden days they saw as an untouchable they don't really go even near samaritans samaritans were untouchables but what united samaritans and christians or like jewish christians is the blood of jesus think about that for a time, for a moment the blood of jesus can able to put an end to all the racial discrimination all over the world if they give weight and value and meditate the blood of jesus that's why enemy always wants the people to withhold meditating the blood of jesus blood of jesus will break every barrier blood of jesus will break every barrier between heaven and earth and among the earth among the kingdoms among the people among the colors among the different background it breaks the chain it breaks the barrier very powerful that's why god created all people have only blood in red color none of the people have green color blood or yellow color blood if you think about that for a second um that really blow your mind because through the blood of his son jesus he united all colors into one that is really powerful uh, amazing uh, you know like god's wisdom is so human minds cannot fathom it is so big and vast that's really powerful um yeah so and also like if you see in the leviticus chapter 17 god's word says that god told people not to um eat the blood for the life yeah bible says here that um, for the life of every creature is its blood it's the blood is its life therefore i have said to the people of israel you shall not eat the blood of any creature for the life of the every creature is its uh blood whoever eats it shall be cut off so you know so that is like in the old testament in the leviticus we see that so god god is telling that the whole life is in the blood when a person dies um we see that the blood flow stops 
um, because the heart is the one that pumps the blood. So that keeps the blood circulating and active. And uh, the moment when a person dies, you see that there will be like a freezing starts. And that is the time where the life becomes dried up, started to dry. Um, so, so God's blood, that is the son of Je- that is son of God's blood, Jesus' blood is now is upon us, is now covering us, is now flowing through us. And that is really powerful. Um, yeah. So, and also we see here that um, um, in the book of Matthew 26, 28. So, Jesus started to speak about his blood. So, what the blood of Jesus is doing in our life, in our midst. So, this is Matthew chapter 26, 28. Chapter 26 and verse 28. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So Jesus said that my blood is really forgiving your sins and um, poured out, where it was poured out, poured up, poured out on the mercy seat of God. And um, so in the Old Testament, they pour the blood of the goat or the bull um, in the mercy seat of God. And today, Jesus' blood is poured out, poured out on the mercy seat of God. Holy Spirit probably captured all the blood and literally poured into the mercy seat of God. The Spirit of God is the one who really brings and connects the dots and brings the revelation of Jesus Christ. And today, as you walk with Christ uh, through the Spirit of God, He will reveal who Christ is. As you know more and more about Jesus, you will know who the Father is. So there is a, you know, like a lineage, there is a hierarchy, there is a um, Spirit of God reveals Jesus. Jesus reveals the Father. That's really powerful to see. When Jesus was physically present on this earth, He said, look at me, you will see Father. Know me, you will know Father. Holy Spirit, Whenever you ask Holy Spirit, He will reveal the finished work of Jesus, what Jesus did for you, how much Jesus loves you. The more and more you know about Jesus, you will know more about the Father. So, no confusion there. So, everyone is selfless. Amazing to see. Father is also selfless. He really uh, let His only begotten Son to send uh, to this earth to redeem you and me. If Father thought like, no, my Son is more important for me than the creation, that is the you and me, the human being, um, then the, the, but God really did not withheld any good thing. Jesus was the best thing that the Father had, had to offer. He offered. What else you need? See, this breaks every condemnation, every chain. That The Father is willing to, not only willing, He done it. He gave His only Son. He who gave His only Son, how much more He will give all other things. Assurance is there. It starts with the blood. Father, let his son's blood to bleed so that you and I can be forgiven, redeemed and settled, established. That is really amazing. That's a blessing of God. That's the grace of God. Yes, that's the power of God. That is unconditional love of God. That's, that love is what we are really gathering here on this earth and pondering upon this love, how deep this love is, how much breadth, how much, um, you know, like width the love is and how much height the love is along with all saints, that is, we all are saints of God and God really made us saint through His blood. So we are pondering upon the blood and the power of the blood and the power of the love of God towards us. Uh, That's what Paul is telling. That's what church should do. The main objective is ponder upon the love of God, ponder upon how, how much God loves us. The moment when you know that, that breaks every chain, that breaks every bondage, that brings people into salvation, that brings deliverance, that brings breakthrough, that really elevates you, settles you. You will be prosperous in your spirit, soul, body. In everything, you will be rich because of the love. Because of the love, Father's love. He who gave His only Son along with Him, He will give all other things. You will get that assurance. You will know that you are nothing can separate you from the love of God. It's all starts with the blood. It's all... The, the foundation is the blood of Jesus. And uh, that's really key and essential. You know, like today, in order to buy something, you need to pay the money. You can pay money or silver or gold or like uh, any form of digital currency in the future probably. Um, you need a substance. So God to buy all of us from the bondage that the enemy has held us and he really traded us through his blood. He redeemed us through the blood. He restored us through the blood. It's once for all. You buy a home, it's in your name. You cannot able to, no one can able to come and take your home that is written in your name because you paid the price, you bought the home. You are bought with a great price, Bible says, not by the gold or silver. Gold or silver may, value may change here and there, 
but you are redeemed by the incorruptible and the value doesn't change there is no there is a there is a, you cannot be able to set a, this is the value of blood no unimaginable no one can able to buy the blood but the blood bought you and me that is the truth priceless very expensive very priceless meaning you cannot be able to even tell so jesus gave that blood hallelujah and through that blood he redeemed us he bought us once for all how can you think that you will be just missed out he bought you with his precious blood you belong to him now you are his own possession you are his own beloved you are his own love he will never give up you for anything else or anyone else so that is really amazing to see that yes so since therefore now we have been justified by his blood more shall we be saved by the wrath that's where we finished last week i believe so i wanted to just like recoup to uh, um understand what this is about since therefore we have now been justified by his blood much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of god so god is telling an assurance hey you are saved by my blood the wrath of god is coming but coming against the ungodly unjust the people who rejected the blood primarily that is salvation so rejected the blood if anyone reject the sal- blood of jesus that is equal to that of rejecting the salvation but god's word is telling that like my blood will cover you from the coming wrath the coming wrath you are bought by the blood so you are under the blood you abide by the blood and you have covenant with the blood you are clothed with the blood you are cleansed by the blood you are really living a life a relationship with christ through the blood so god is telling that blood will completely lead you through and protect you from the wrath coming wrath um so yeah so that is really an amazing word that we see yeah so uh, ephesians 1 7 we see that uh, in him we have redemption through the blood so the blood of jesus this is ephesians 1 7 in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace the grace of god revealed and the blood of god blood of jesus was uh, shed on the cross and through that we have the forgiveness and uh, through that we have the um, redemption yes so this is what i started this week with so hebrews chapter 10 you can able to read it later so here we see in this passage the therefore brothers since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of jesus so we have confidence now to enter um through the blood of jesus yeah so once we were far like uh, even now many of you thinking some of you at least thinking that am i far but god is telling no you are very near uh, but the, this is hebrews chapter sorry ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13 uh but now in Christ Jesus you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ so Jesus brought us together close to him close to the father through his own blood and that is what Jesus did for you and me so i want you to um get hold of this yeah so yeah so here is the very important passage in the book of acts 2028 acts chapter 20 and verse 28 pay careful attention to yourselves that to all the flock in which the holy spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of god that is you and me which he obtained with his own blood how did how did god obtain us he obtained us through his own blood he bought us with his own blood jesus bought us so god bought us with the son of his son's blood so yeah so that's really essential for us to understand as a key important thing how he bought us with his own blood and um that is really a powerful um yeah powerful to see okay so first peter 1 to that is also a very powerful passage first peter 1 to according to the foreknowledge of god the father in the sanctification of the spirit for obedience to jesus christ and for sprinkling with his blood may grace peace be multiplied to you so sprinkling with his blood as i said like in the old testament like pretty much everything is really um sanctified by the blood they sprinkle the blood and the that object is sanctified today god's blood is sprinkled on you god's blood is cleansing you so you are completely belongs to him so god reconciled us through the through his son's blood bible says in the book of colossians in the book of colossians chapter 1 and verse 20 and through him to reconcile 
to himself all things whether on earth or in heaven making peace by the blood of his cross that's amazing so through the blood he made peace god made peace there was a hostility between god and mankind um but then god through the blood he reconciled to himself all things all things everything that was really hostile was now reconciled and that is really a powerful powerful um word right there in the colossians 120 so yeah and hebrews chapter 12 24 says that and to jesus the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of abel blood of abel is calling for vengeance i need justice i need justice because my brother killed me but the blood of jesus jesus was also killed or crucified in other words but his blood is calling out for forgiveness let my blood forgive as many sons and daughters make as many unbelievers or gentiles or even a jewish unbeliever to become um sons and daughters of god that's what the blood of jesus is speaking so louder and clearer hebrews 9:14 and that is amazing to see so yeah that's really amazing so god always used the blood as a sign so right before uh, israelites were redeemed from the egyptians hand the blood shall be a sign this is from exodus 12:13 exodus chapter 12 and verse 13 the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are and when i see the blood i will pass over you and no plague will befall you to destroy you and i will strike the land of egypt so this is what god is telling because you are marked by the blood on the day of wrath you will be redeemed you will not be punished you will not be killed or destroyed because of my blood the blood shall be your sign it is definitely depends on how much you put your trust in the blood of jesus the more you put your trust on your own self righteousness you will fail the more you put your trust on jesus blood you are redeemed protected and his blood cleanses you every day and his his life his relationship changes you so the blood brought you near to him and since you are brought near to him you are being transformed every day to become like jesus to be reflect in nature but you have to come through the blood every day because bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of glory of god no one is perfect but you have to learn to come closely into that intimate relationship with god through the blood of jesus each day as you walk with him you are walking in light his blood cleanses you and your nature changes your behavior changes your habits changes your sin problem changes step by step god is really redeeming his church and he's really transforming you every day to become like him so you every day you are transforming and that is a progressive life growth that the lord wants to give you through the blood from the blood starting point is the blood that is so amazing to uh, see that so yeah so bible says in the book of hebrews 10 29 hebrews chapter 10 and verse 29 so this is also a powerful uh, passage how much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who spunned the son of god and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified as and has out raged the spirit of grace so here we see that like um, the people who are not saved the people who are really rejecting the blood rejecting the finished work rejecting the son of god is the one who is rejecting the blood of jesus the one who is really telling i don't want that blood i don't really need the blood that's why enemy is really afraid if anyone speaks about the blood the enemy is afraid because the blood alone can able to redeem people the blood alone can able to save people the blood of jesus alone can able to cleanse people the blood of jesus alone can able to bring that intimacy with god even for believers i'm talking about many believers are living in condemnation they think that god doesn't talk to them because they think they have done something but god's word says very crystal as clear my blood is enough my blood cleanses you and draws you closer as you draw closer then your life will be redeemed it's like catch 22 like uh, basically like uh, you have to come through the blood and once you come through the blood then you can able to 
have access to god when you have access to god then you can able to um walk in that fullness walk in that glory walk in that amazing redemption transformation but the enemy wants you to be afraid of get into afraid of come to god uh because he wants to hide the truth about the blood many christians are really living in condemnation guilt they are saved but they are living in condemnation and guilt they don't exercise their relationship um rights with god they don't have they don't really walk in that intimacy with god and talk to god they don't believe that that prayers will be answered because they don't know they underestimated the power of the blood today i wanted to encourage you any ministry you do or anything that god wants to do to you always value the blood that's why god really told us to take communion and whenever you meet whenever you 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 remember lord's death until he comes and you have to remember you have to proclaim what the death is all about shedding the blood primarily when every drop of blood was shed even the water started to oozing out of the body of jesus he was pronounced dead the reason is because god wants his son to shed every drop of blood for you and me that's why even the water started to come out of jesus side so he gave people can give maybe like one unit of blood probably but jesus gave all the five and a half or six unit of blood or all the whatever the number of amount of blood is there in he was in his body he gave all blood he all over he was shedding and oozing the reason is because he want to pay the high price to redeem the mankind tomorrow if a child is going to be born the child is going to be born in the sin because that is how the nature of the world is but then the moment when the child knows the lord jesus believes in jesus accepts the lord through the blood as the child grows the blood redeems the blood of jesus is having power for future also not only for the present not only for the past but also for the future that much powerful is the blood of jesus god is so good and he is going to do extraordinary things and he is going to do awesome and amazing things um yeah so i think uh, even at this time i wanted to encourage you to continue to meditate on the blood of jesus yeah so th- with this i'm going to finish this john chapter 653 john 653 so jesus said to them truly truly i say to you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you so today so the life the life that jesus is talking about the zoe zoterius life the ruach breath of god the life of christ he is telling unless you eat the flesh of son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you so this is from the book of john 653 so god wants you to continue to feed him feed on him so through the blood you eat the flesh of jesus and the blood of jesus you drink and you have life in you and you have that zoe life and you have that um ruach the breath of god in you and the zoterius the full of life in you and you will constantly move in that glory move in that wisdom move in that authority so in this world you are like jesus bible says in this world you are like him meaning you are eating the blood and the flesh of jesus and you are really walking in that fullness of christ through holy spirit so you are really demonstrating how christ is here today if jesus is here what he will do you will do because you have the life of christ through the blood and the body of jesus manifesting in you through you and you become the workmanship of god in christ jesus you are you so you can able to see that you become the workmanship meaning like you become god's hands you become god's eyes you become hosting the presence of god it all starts through the blood you cannot able to host the presence of god because enemy is there who wants to cause you guilt condemnation he wants you to think you are unworthy you are good for nothing fit for nothing you are really a wretched sinner but god is telling my blood cleanses your conscience clear do you know why the blood of jesus cleanses you to serve him i wanted to show that passage and then we will wrap up hebrews 9:14 and then we are going to wrap up today's session so here is that passage how much more than will the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to god cleanse our conscience this is the conscience is the one that the enemy attacks mostly to give you guilt feeling from acts that lead to death because when you are guilty when you feel condemned you feel death quickly so that we may serve the living god the enemy wants to kill steal and destroy one of the way that the enemy does is by giving a guilty conscience giving a bad conscience giving a um fearful con- conscience and not a bold conscience so god's blood cleanses you 
and gives you con- you it, the blood of jesus cleanses even our conscience from every dirt dust and evil things that is deposited on your conscience you will acts that you have done in the past that is haunting you for years his blood cleanses you allow the blood to cleanse you when you do so you can able to overcome death and also you will serve the living god that's key and essential the blood of jesus many are not able to serve the living god because their conscience is really pricking and conscience is really causing them to stay back or stay away but the blood of jesus when you allow cleanses your conscience so that you can be overcome you can overcome death and also you can serve the living god so even right now the lord is going to um bless each one of you and you all have a wonderful blessed day and uh, we are going to see you all soon uh, keep watching on the community page and you will be keep me, i'll keep you posted god bless you all thank you each one of you god bless you all thank you so much god bless bye mm-hmm.